trading discard spells, and then off the top, the top's a dot. And what do you do about that? You die. You die. Yes, that's what you do. So having a, an actual proper answer to that, that actually affects both uh, Blood Baron and Obs of that, that's huge here. Renault was actually pretty good for Jim when we watched him play against Shun Monsters, too. He ended up losing the match, but being able to take care of Domri and Xenagos mm -hmm. uh, was really, really powerful stuff. And you can imagine that Obzidat has a difficult card for him to beat. He actually has a copy of Renounce the Guilds in his hand right now. Rosen is going to play a Life Bane Zombie. He's going to see exactly what's going on here, assuming that Jim does not have a counter spell, and he does not. So he will lay out a Hand of Aetherling, a Jace Architect of Thought, a Supreme Verdict, a copy of Reprisal, a Divination, a Swings' Revelation, or Renounce the Guild, which you don't see as a third land. Nope. You see a lot of gas and the inability to use any of it, actually. Now, uh, if well, you're Jim, the idea here is, all right, well, I will just draw an untapped land and I will cast Divination. Yeah, this not bad. really easy. <laughs> And uh, if he draws an Azori skill, get her a Temple of Enlightenment, that kind of stinks, but it is a third land. Yeah, no, I mean, like, you obviously are not losing any of your, your removal here because it's a Life Bane Zombie. So even if you miss, which you didn't, <laughs> easy game. Um, but even if he missed, or even if he drew a tap land, uh, he still gets to sit on Reprisal and Renounce the Guilds, yeah. which severely limits what Jonathan can do. That's true. That's true. Jim, I think, is considering, okay, do I cast Divination because then I go I go from six cards up to eight and then I'll have to discard, so am I supposed to wait here? Am I supposed to just draw the cards? I think you're just supposed to draw the cards. Yeah, I think so. Um, particularly given that Jonathan has seen your hand and knows what removal spells you have access to. And also, he did not find a land there, so eh, we'll see what ends up happening. Or two, mm -hmm. two renounces, a deicide, or a prizal. I mean, his hand's great, he just needs a land. Yeah. That's it. Um, it looks like he is... Okay, well, he, he kind of shuffled that reprisal to yeah. the front. That feels like the one to get rid of. Uh, you do have a lot of redundant answers to uh, the big scary things, like I said, like Blood Baron and Obs of that. Um, and if Jonathan has a, uh, a Desecration Demon this turn, you do have a Banishing Light for that as well. I actually kind of like the discarding of Renounce there. Even though I agree with you, the Renounce is incredibly powerful in this matchup, mm -hmm. taking care of Blood Baron and Obs of that, because Jonathan saw renounce the guilds. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I like it as a discard. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying, like, in that uh, he is going to, like, you think he's gotten rid of the one, so maybe he jams his one gold uh, card there, but as this matchup's actually going to play out, Jonathan's almost certainly going to see his hand a few more times. This is true. Before that would ever play out. This is the second time he's able to do so. A Sin Collector is cast. Again, four of these in his deck after sideboard. It's going to take a copy of Supreme Verdict away from Jim. Yeah, Sin Collector huge in this matchup. Four Sin Collectors, three Duresses, four Thought Seizes post-board, uh, and then, of course, some number of Life Bane Zombies just for the peaks. Yeah. So uh, Jim Davis not going to have a lot of hidden information this game. Found a land, it's planes. That's big for Jim. He, yeah. can maybe case it. he can cast a Jace if he'd like here. He can cast, uh, you know, maybe a couple of removal spells or, you know, play one removal spell, leave man up for something else. He's got, definitely got some options available, especially because this land comes to play untapped. It looks yeah. like he's going to go simply with Jace. Yep. And, uh, okay. He's going to play Jace and actually go down ticking, digging for presumably land. Find some. So that worked. Do you like the down tick? It sounds like uh, in your yeah, voice I, you didn't. I did not. I, well, I, I'm not going to say I didn't like it. It never even occurred to me. Okay. I, I just assumed he was up ticking here. Okay. Um, I don't think I like it. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I don't like exposing yourself like this. You're you're taking a ton of damage from this. Yeah, you're, you're saying you're basically allowing Sin Collector to uh, to trade off of the Jace very easily and setting yourself up to start taking damage. Um, Jim's going to put himself in a position here where he has to start answering these threats, um, and these aren't the threats that you need to answer. You know, like uh, Obzadat. Ghost Council, Underworld Connections. These are the real problem cards in this matchup. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be putting yourself in a position where Life Bane Zombie of all cards is, is something that you have to deal with. Now, now it's, I mean, it's something he has to deal with now. Yeah, well, it is. I mean, sure. It's something he always had to deal with in, yeah. the, in the purest sense, but uh, in this particular case, like, if he, if he just sticks Jace and keeps uptaking it, he's in a much better shape. Deicide takes care of Underworld Connections. Get that stuff out of here. Let's see what the follow-up is going to be. Pretty easy to just start by playing a land. There's a copy of Hollowed Fountain. And they're going to pass the turn back over to Rosen, who will take a draw. Again, you see the Muta Vault, the Sin Collector, and the Life Bane Zombie. Going to fire up the Muta Vault. We're coming in for a bunch. Renounce the Gills is going to take care of Sin Collector. Now, of course, that's not the card that Renounce the Gills no. wants to take care of. But, no. but uh, honestly, there's not a ton he can do about that. That's one of the many reasons why Sin Collector is insane in this matchup. Yep. Uh, being able to insulate your uh, your bigger, scarier, multicolored threats is huge. 
Manic Influence plus passing of the turn, representing a removal spell. Heroes Downfall, something of that nature. His Rosen, Davis draws a plane. So lands are no longer a problem. No. Nope. And he has his win condition in his hand, and that's an Aetherling. Now, of course, it's very difficult to just slam down Aetherling right now because Heroes Downfall is a card that exists. But the longer you keep it in your hand, the longer you open yourself up to getting it thought seized. Yeah, uh, Aetherling is uh, probably more vulnerable in hand than it is in play. Uh, it also doesn't do a lot here, honestly. Uh, yeah, it, it does not block the Life Bane Zombie. Um, it would put Jim in a position where he couldn't actually respond to, like, he would not be able to remove an Obzidot if Jonathan cast it uh, in time to stop himself from being drained for an additional two. So even though I think you can safely assume that, you're, that your Aethling is going to live post-board, it's still not that great a play. I think he's just gonna, yeah, there we go. Uh, There's a rev. Go for a, a baby rev instead. Uh, is three baby? What's what's the? Three's baby. Okay. Three's baby is, rev. Is four the point where it stops being baby? I think five is when it starts to be mid, mid range rev. And oh, then anything, anything for more than five, the opponent typically concedes. Well, sure, but there's, I mean, there's got to be a, like, a spot between ba baby and concede. Rev for four. I've, I've been very satisfied with a lot of rev for fours <laughs> in my time. A nice life you have. <laughs> I need more cards, more life. Uh, you've hated every ref. For, have you ever cast a ref for four? I have. Okay. I actually, in the Seattle Opens that I've got to play, because that's like the one weekend I take off of work, sure. both the last two I've played um, Esper. Okay. Yeah. All right. And actually had a blast. So every time I've played Esper in those tournaments and I cast a ref for like six, I'm just like, I should have been doing this the whole time. This is a lot of fun. Right. And then, then the next round, you miss your fifth land and can't do anything. I can that. ref for one. <laughs> That's a baby rev. That's, that is a that that's, is, uh, that's what we in the industry refer to as a baby rev. That's correct. So uh, there's a reason we call it that. Not too proud either. I've for one. Because it can't stand on its own. That's true. <laughs> it's not really very good either. No. Jim Davis uh, draws three. Uh, we'll, we'll call that one a, a preteen rev. All right. Uh, I'll let you have a, that. A teenage rev. I'll there let we go. you have that one. And uh, find some gas, but is, is faced with some tough spots here. I mean, um, he's got a planes, he's got Celestial Flare, he's got a Verge in his hand. I'm sure he would like to get more out of his verdict than trading this with a Life Bane Zombie. Yeah, uh, the Celestial Flare is a pretty good pretty good solution to that Life Bane Zombie, although Mutavault can muck with that. The card he really wants to answer is Underworld Connections. Yeah. He does not have an answer to that. Now, I actually kind of like this verdict simply because you, you said that, you know, he can take care of Mutavault with the Flare and Life Bane Zombie's life, but Mutavault's actually just a problem. Sure. For these decks, so trading that with the Flare actually isn't so bad. That is, that is true. We saw an activation of connections. Rosam actually drew a copy of Hero's Downfall. His draw for the turn was a swamp. Now, let's see if he finds a Haymaker. That looked like a gold card. I don't know which one it was. I believe it was another Sin Collector. I was actually thought so. Oh, okay. Yeah, thought so. That, I mean, that's still it's good. kind of the same thing. Yeah. Oh, I don't love the ordering of this. I would have rather led with Thoughtsies, I think. Eh. I mean, you're right that Mutavault's a problem, but... I mean, you, you've got to draw out Celestial Flare somehow, right? Well, sure. I just, I would rather have the information before I make the attack. Like, I would rather Thought Season in, in, in Main Phase 1, see what's going on, and then decide, okay, I would like to attack my Mutavault into this. Because now he, does, he hasn't given himself the option to either attack or decide, whoa, I don't want to attack because I don't want to trade this with the Flare. Okay. Uh, there's an argument for that. Uh, the other consideration is that if you attack, you have to assume that if Jim has a way to interact with the Mutavault, he's going to use it. Now, Jim is trying really hard not to here, but... Uh, I think, you, I think that's a safe assumption. So if you attack here and uh, get Jim to, to tap two, two of his lands to, uh, to play anything, really, then you know your Sin Collector is going to resolve. Or not your Sin Collector, I guess your, your, your Life Bane Zombie. Yeah. And if it's a Sin Collector, it's a different story altogether, I think. True. It, it, we, sure, if it's Sin Collector, yeah, then you actually just cast it uh, for info and everything else. But. And I know that Rossum has not played a land yet. He's going to take a look at the hand here. Yeah, I think he's got to cast his thoughts. He's going to take Aetherling. Mm. Kind of has that luxury. If he plays Life Bane and sees a hand he doesn't care about, he doesn't have to cast the Thought Seize. Uh, in this case, get out. This is a little bit surprising. He's going to take Sphinx's Revelation. I, you know, I say that surprising. Obviously, Revelation is a fantastic card, but I, it, I would not be surprised at all if Jim just goes, you know, untap, play a with the blue mana up, and go. Yeah, what's that do here? Against Life Bane Zombie? I mean, it's not great against Life Bane Zombie, but it gives him the chance to actually win the game. I mean, Russell's at 11 life. We could have a bit of a racer that Jim can actually win. That's true uh jonathan does have the hero's downfall this, so he, this is true he can win that race yeah uh, he, he can he buys the turn he needs he actually wins the race anyway i think um maybe not on uh let's see so if if, if jim casts aetherling just slams it here uh falls to four aetherling attacks for presumably eight and then falls to one so i guess on board uh jim's actually winning that race yeah and i think that given the contents of jim's hand 
you know, I think he is almost forced into catching this eighth inning this turn because Elspeth doesn't really do a lot against Life Man's Omni. Reprise was not doing very much. The Sinka Pate isn't doing very much either. So I think that he is priced in and just playing this eighth inning. Now, I'm fine if you believe you can win this eighth inning race, mm -hmm. but if that's not the case and you can lose to some, some, some sort of top decks, that, that's when I don't love that play. Sure. Uh, I, well, again, with the, the hero's downfall that Jonathan has, uh, he, he can see that he can win the race. And yeah, you, you could lose to some, uh, some cards that Jim could draw there. Uh, but you can also draw discard spells to uh, turn that off. Sure. Now, one other factor here is actually uh, Jim has a syncopate, which Jonathan knows about. Yep. So uh, Jonathan has to make sure he uses Hero's Downfall in a way that doesn't play into syncopate, yep. which is not that hard, because in order for Aetherling to actually uh, win this race, uh, he has ah. to... Oh, that, well, that works too. Okay, it solves that problem. <laughs> um, uh, about yeah. all those things we're saying. Yeah, well, whatever, <laughs> get out. Yeah. Nice card, yeah. nice face. A, a second Hero's Downfall kind of makes what Andrew and I are talking about fa fairly irrelevant at this point. So now it looks like, okay, never mind. I was going to say now it makes <laughs> it look like that taking the revelation doesn't matter. But top of the deck was rather friendly for Jim Davis. So, you know, I think that we should just not talk anymore and just let the game go as it goes. What do yeah? you think? You think so? Yeah, just have a little quiet, just have a little quiet, quiet sit, get a cup of coffee, okay. and then All just right. whatever happens, happens. I mean, I'm okay with that, but... <laughs> Said, let's be real. You, you you couldn't sit in silence if your life How depended on it. How could you say that? <laughs> You're trying I'm actually right now, rather. You? I'm actually rather quiet are at you? times. Are yes. You? yes. Okay. Here's a revelation in the main phase. It's going to be for five. So he's going to go up to nine. Will Jim? And again, uh, I like the main phase revelation here just because if he finds a land, like a yeah, temple, or something, mm -hmm. you know, he can put it directly into play. Yeah. No, he does. Uh, whatever cards he's going to draw, he does put them in his hand where they are exposed to the plethora of discard spells yeah. that Jonathan has access to. Um, Having, you know, this is your third revelation. You know, you've, you've cast one, you had one discarded. This is now your third. So honestly, your land count not that significant at this point. Sure. Uh, there is a, a honestly a pretty strong argument for holding it. I'm not sure which one's better. It's it's close either way though. Attack for three, and now this is the Blood Baron of Scopa. There's Norzov's Guildgate. Now this begs the question because we joined this match in progress. We didn't get to see it in game number one. Jim has a planner cleansing in his hand. Now, I guess you can make the argument there's nothing Jonathan can do about planner cleansing anyway. Yeah, I but mean, he never saw it with a Thoughtseize or a Sin Collector. Yeah. Or, it's going to be insane now. Yeah. Uh, really, it needs to come off the top uh, or come at, at the end step for uh, you know from a Sphinx's Revelation. I think that the presence of this card in, in uh, Jim's deck is actually a pretty strong argument for waiting until the end step sure. to, to cast that Sphinx's Revelation. Uh, but that's a that's a game changer. Yeah, I, things work out beautifully here for Jim. He's able to leave four mana available. Now he can represent Counter Magic. Rossum has been drawing cards with other world connections, but you can probably sense a little bit of weakness that he hasn't really been doing very much with yeah. this. So now Jim can cycle Missouri's Charm. He can untap a little bit here. You see the life totals of six to nine. He can actually start getting to work with the old Mutavolt now. Yeah, not bad. Uh, two lands sitting in Jonathan's hand. And this is a spot where even though you know, his deck is full of discard effects, and uh, we've been you know, singing the praises of the discard effects this entire game, they're not great top decks here. Yep. Sin Collector's pretty good, uh, still, just by virtue of being able to you know, get a card out of Jim's hand and then trade with Mutavolt. Mm -hmm. But you're, you don't want to draw Thoughtseize if you're Jonathan here. Yeah, you, this you, is one of the situations where you don't want anything to do with Thoughtseize or Duress. Yeah. Duress is going to draw his cards. Another land, he's going to extend the hand, so Jim Davis is going to win this match. Two games to zero. Blue, white control. No detention spheres. No banishing lights necessary. Takes it down, and that game was real, very close. I think. It was, yeah, I mean, it swinging was. It, it, back yeah. and forth. Some timely it, it top did, deck. It didn't players. look it at the end of it. But yeah, yeah. It's uh, there were there were big plays that went back and forth, uh, and I, I think I was kind of assuming Jonathan was going to take that game down for for most of that stretch. 